What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. Today I'm going to do a little video on the tools that you need to be able to wrap at home. Uh, this is what you basically need in order to wrap a vehicle at your own home. Uh, everything here for the most part is pretty essential. Uh, I haven't brought anything into the equation that I don't use very, very often. Uh, these tools right here, you're going to want to have uh, plus a basic tool set which would then go into the disassembly uh, part of wrapping a vehicle. Now, if you're looking for disassembly videos, you have to check out my website, ckwraps.com. I'll put a link in the top corner and in the description below for you. I have this beautiful McLaren 570S here, about to be ready to be wrapped in a, in a new color. Uh, it's gonna look amazing when it's done. I'm excited about it. Uh, all the videos that I do for this will be on the website. I'll do a walk around tour of this car once it's finished for YouTube. The products that I have here, most of these can be purchased on Amazon. So I'll put a link in the description below uh, for all these products that you can get on Amazon. The ones that you can't get on Amazon, I will uh, explain where you can get them from and how you can go about doing that. Uh, but for the most part, again, this is what we have. Now, I do have a couple of duplicates here of some things because there are slight variations to tools. Um, you can choose what you feel like is best for yourself. Um, tool pouch, obvious, obviously optional. I didn't have a tool pouch for a very long time, but a tool pouch, actually, I've gotten quite used to having it. It's my, one of my favorite pieces of equipment that I use all the time. It keeps everything that I need right here. Instead of reaching in my pockets or putting stuff down on the floor, uh, kicking it around, losing it, or putting it on a workbench and rolling the workbench around, I prefer just to have the pouch. Um, a rolling workbench near a car that's made out of metal, probably not a good idea. So the pouch is soft, takes care of everything that I need to put inside of it, and it holds plenty. Uh, this pouch right here is by SignMaker Tools. Uh, again, I'll put a link to their website in the description below. So this product right here is not available on Amazon. Uh, obviously, there are other pouches out there. Why do I like this one? It's very durable, it's strong, lasts a while, it's pretty cool actually. Uh, clips on your belt very easily. You got place in the back for business cards and when you wanna take it to go, you can just flip it and close everything up and it stays closed. So you don't lose anything out of your pouch, basically. Uh, so really handy, uh, this is a black one. It's probably my favorite, they had an orange one. They do have orange ones, that's like their signature color. Uh, the black one is amazing though. So this is what you're gonna use to keep all your tools neat and tidy and secure, and this way you don't lose them. Now, let's get into what you're gonna actually need for doing the work itself. Uh, I'm just gonna work myself from right to left here. I'll go through some basic stuff. Uh, start off, isopropyl alcohol, 70%. Now, in a time like this, where the pandemic is going on and people are buying up disinfectants and isopropyl alcohol and hand sanitizer very quickly, basically before production can even happen, um, you can use Windex instead. There are other options for products. Windex is fairly affordable. Uh, it's available in the stores. You just wanna make sure that when you're prepping the surface with Windex, you wipe off the haze, because Windex, as much as I like to say that it's streak-free, is definitely not. Uh, so wipe off the haze. Isopropyl alcohol does leave a haze sometimes too, so you tend to wipe that away, but not as bad as Windex. Um, so again, 70% isopropyl alcohol. Anything stronger is not necessary. Uh, it can do, it can be a little bit harmful if you go up to like 90 or 99, um, especially on clear plastic lenses that they tend to crack or they can crack if you put a really high concentration of alcohol on it. Rubbing alcohol is very strong. I don't recommend it. If you use it, you can dilute it. Again, very similar to isopropyl alcohol. I honestly couldn't tell you what the, the real difference is between the chemical properties. Probably someone will chime in in the comments below. But the isopropyl alcohol, 70% is all you need. Less than that, I wouldn't really go either. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it down to 50%. Uh, if you buy 90 or 99, you can dilute it about you know, one third if you have 99. Uh, this means you know, equal parts for the most part, you know, not equal parts, but one third water into your 99% alcohol. Okay, this is what you're gonna need to strip surface contaminants. This is gonna get rid of wax, oils, that sort of thing. It will not strip a ceramic coating. So if the vehicle is ceramic coated, it's not going to strip the ceramic coating. Yeah, that is a completely different uh, uh, line of work when it comes to removing a ceramic coating. Can you wrap over a ceramic coating? Yes, you can, mostly. Um, does the vinyl stick as well? No, it doesn't, but that's a whole other ball game right there. Next up, we're gonna get into uh, something a little more technical, is digital thermometer, okay? This digital thermometer, get yourself run-of-the-mill digital thermometer, these things 20, 30 bucks, is gonna tell you surface temperature. So I point the laser at, point the laser at my hands, let's say, tells me right now that my hand is 83 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, this goes Fahrenheit or Celsius, which is great. Uh, this is what you're gonna need for post heating, deep recesses, things like that, uh, because you're gonna wanna make sure that if you, have to, if you have to stretch into a recessed area that appears to be very deep, you're going to wanna post heat that area in order to uh, you know, reduce memory in the film, 
create better, better bonding. Again, more on that on my website, ckrapps.com. I have video demonstrations showing exactly how well that works. Uh, one tool you'll need. 20, 30 bucks right there. Isopropyl, you can buy it by the gallon, you can buy it by the quart, whatever, a liter, whatever you want. Uh, usually around three or four bucks a quart or a liter, depending on where you are, Canada, US, other countries, depends. Um, but again, that's what you're gonna need. Now, glove, very important. Uh, this is a fairly new glove uh, that SignMaker Tools gave me. Uh, glides very well, it's supposed to be cut resistance. Gets dirty though, which, which bothers me a little bit because it's white. I wish it was just black for the most part. Uh, the last one that I had from them, this, the Super Glove, I think it was called, uh, was gray and it didn't show a lot of dirt. Uh, this one shows a lot of dirt. Again, this is, this is a fresh blade, okay? These are very sharp blades and it is quite cut proof, okay? If I did this to my skin right now, I would be in trouble. I'd be cutting myself up big time. So a great glove to have. Uh, this is gonna help reduce friction when you have to squeegee with your hands, especially going around edges and things like that. You're, you won't drag the film. Uh, and a very essential tool. They didn't have gloves when I started wrapping uh, forever ago. They didn't have, not that I knew of at least anyways, I think maybe a year later or something like that, then I found a, a wrap glove and now there's a whole bunch on the market. So you choose what you want uh, as far as wrap gloves go. This is by far one of my favorites or is my favorite, lasts forever. Uh, again, this is, there's no seams on it. Uh, it's stitched very well and lasts a really long time other than it getting dirty, which you can just wash it. Glove. Basics, get into the real basics here. So we have squeegees, okay, there are hundreds of different kinds of squeegees on the market. You're going to mainly want something softer and something harder. Whatever you choose as far as you know, the softness and the, and the stiffness goes, totally up to you. I use these guys here, these are my favorite squeegees by far. They have magnets in them, they stick to anything. So just for example, a magnet, um, what's magnetic on this table right now? Let's see, that, that right there. So. That's magnetic, pretty cool. They can stick to the car, it will not stick to the McLaren because the McLaren is composite or aluminum, it's just not gonna stick, just, it needs steel uh, for the most part. Uh, these are great, this one is a very soft squeegee so it flexes very well for me. Uh, pros and cons to having soft squeegees is that if you don't push hard enough, you might leave air behind. Having a more stiff squeegee like this one here, I can, I can barely bend it, um, you're less likely to not be, able, not be pushing hard enough and, and therefore not leaving air behind under your wrap. Uh, this one can cause you to leave air behind. But on top of that, this one is, I like this one better because this contours into the shapes and areas of the vehicle because no vehicle is really truly flat for the most part. There are some flat areas, but there are a lot of contours to a vehicle. So having a squeegee that contours around panels like this, much better for me, personally speaking. I use the gold one to tuck in usually around areas like this. Uh, the odd time I'll use it to squeegee, very rare. Uh, if, if I happen to grab the wrong one, I, you know, that's why I have a buffer on it. Um, what buffer is this yellow strip on the end? That's why I happen to have a buffer on it. Uh, just in case I grab it, I'll use it because I'm kind of too lazy sometimes to just switch it back. But I don't like using this one as much as I like using the softer one. Again, both magnetic, okay? So these are by SignMaker Tools. Uh, you can get these, again, link in the description below. These are not available on Amazon. Uh, Digital thermometer available, isopropyl alcohol maybe, I don't know. Um, now, if you don't want a fancy squeegee, there are your basic gold squeegees. Uh, these are by 3M. These are available on Amazon. You can get these pretty much anywhere. Uh, this one is a lot more soft than this gold squeegee here. See, I can barely bend this one. This one I can actually bend. So these are your cheap run of the mill, three, four bucks a squeegee. I've had this squeegee now for two and a half years. These wear out. These don't, big, big difference. So you maybe pay 20, $25 for one of these, or you can blow through these every six months. You know, you're blowing through like maybe four or five of them, and there's your 20, $25 right there for one of these. So buy something that lasts. Uh, same with this guy right here. I've had this thing for like two and a half years. Uh, it's lasts forever. This is like a rubber squeegee, so it never wears out. It's amazing. You can just replace the buffer and uh, use it forever until you lose it, basically. Uh, I have a whole box of these because these are just your generic, again, run-of-the-mill squeegees. Uh, th this is the stiffer one. There is a blue one, which is softer. The blue one that's softer is, one, is my preferred choice when it comes to squeegeeing film down on a vehicle because it contours better like this one. Not quite as good as this one, but it does contour better. It contours better than this. Uh, I have blue ones here somewhere. I have tons of stuff. All right, next up. I like this tool. This tool is a triangle tinting tool. You can get them on Amazon. I'll put a link there for you. Um, but this one specifically is from SunTech. 
they make PPF, they make window tint. Uh, this is my favorite triangle. I don't know why, what it is about it. It's just a great triangle to have. Uh, you'll have to contact a distributor or SunTech themselves to find out where you can get these guys from uh, because I, these exact versions, I don't believe are available on Amazon. I'd have to check. Uh, if it is, I will put a link there for you. Uh, this is great for getting under weather stripping and stuff like this. So I can get right in here and tuck the film and get the, get the weather stripping lifted and get that film tucked right in underneath. Now there are, there is a downside to this where it is slightly sharp. So we have to be careful when it comes to this. Uh, this one's really worked. I, I use it a lot. I use it for all kinds of different things too, not just tucking film. I use this for, uh, you know, prying off plastic clips and stuff like that. It, there's, there's a ton of uses that this is good for. It's my favorite tool on the whole table, actually. It's probably one of the cheapest and, and my favorite tool on the whole table, next to one other one. Um, as far as like what it can do. Now, a squeegee does what a squeegee does, a knife does what a knife does. This is very versatile and does a whole bunch of different things. Uh, again, so that, again, probably one of my favorite tools. We're gonna move on. Uh, let's do, just talk about the knife. So we have a knife. Again, more personal preference on the handle that you decide that you want. You're gonna want a, a nine millimeter, 30 degree blade, and I'm actually gonna bring over some of this stuff so you guys can see it. Um, so these are the squeegees. These are, it says yellowtools.com. It's SignMaker Tools, Yellow Tools, it's a very similar company, um, or same company. So these are the magnets, Tawny Mag Basic. Uh, this is the squeegee, that's what it's called. Cool. Uh, your blade, okay. Your handle of the blade is always personal preference. How comfortable does that feel to you? Totally up to you. I prefer the plastic ones because these are less likely to do damage on the, on the paint if you happen to be resting it on the car at all in any way. Um, there is a slight bit of metal on the end here, but usually this doesn't make contact with anything. That's why it's surrounded by plastic here and on the other side here as well. Like basically what's gonna hit the car is here and here for the most part. Uh, so we wanna make sure that that's protected and plastic. The size of the handle, totally up to you. I used to use uh, just your run of the mill Ulfa handles. Uh, they're metal, they're not the best, but you know, this is great. Glides, the, the blade glides very well in this. So when it comes to retracting the blade and, and retracting it, sorry, retracting the blade, um, it's, it works very well. Uh, if you want to snap off a blade, you just pop off the back piece. You take this little bit right here, you snap, you pull, you snap, you, you um, bring the blade up to the edge there, the line, and then you snap the blade back. You're going to want something to actually house this though. So my next piece of equipment would be this guy right here. This guy right here is a blade box, Blade Breaker HD. This is from SignMaker Tools as well. This is a handy little thing to have. This keeps blades off the floor and it makes it very efficient and effective to snap a blade off. So what I would do here is I would take my blade, bring it up to the first line and in my right hand, put it to the edge and snap it back. There, my blade is in the box automatically. Uh, there is a magnet in here. So this little piece right here comes out quite easily and you pop that guy out and it's never just fallen out and you slide this off and then you can discard your blades safely somewhere. Uh, usually what I do is I wrap them up in a ball of vinyl or some scrap vinyl and um, put it, then put it in the garbage. This way it's protected by the scrap piece of vinyl that I have. So very handy to have. Magnet just pops back in. This clips onto your belt if you want it. Uh, you have to be careful with this. It's, it's metal. Uh, metal is a lot more durable, but if, you're leaning, if you lean against the car, you can do some damage, so be careful. Uh, we'll go along with some more SignMaker Tools stuff, equipment here. Uh, this is a wrap stick flex. This is my, I guess my second favorite tool, or it's top two. This tool is extremely handy to have. It gets into all kinds of wicked little areas, tight areas, tight recesses, window trims, weather seals, all kinds of different stuff. Now it's not very strong, so you don't want to use it to pry stuff with, but it, it just works amazingly. Uh, the style and the shape of it, it's, it, 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 it serves its purpose. It, it's a very, it's a multi-use tool. You can use it all around corners, back sides of doors, that sort of things, um, tucking under weather trim. I always keep an extra one because in, in case it does break, uh, the back corner in this one is actually broken as you can see. I can still use it, not a big deal. I could actually file that down if I wanted to. I'm just missing a teeny tiny bit on the edge there. Uh, I'm not sure what happened. I think I stepped on it. This is months ago and I've also had this one for like a year now. 
So keep a backup. It's good to have, you know, you don't want to have to order and wait. Uh, it might make your job a little bit more difficult if you have to wait or you try using something else that doesn't, that isn't quite as handy as that. Uh, I also, you know, have extra blades. You never know when you lose one. Uh, mainly it's just, you know, you might end up losing one. There's squeegees there. When it comes to cutting vinyl, okay, you're going to want something where the blade is protected. Uh, this is my favorite cutter. There are other ones out there. Uh, I didn't grab it. Let me see. This is a fancy cutter, okay? This bodyguard Teflon knife by SignMaker Tools is incredible, works very well. It, it turns and it curves really nicely. So when you're cutting out like wheel arches and stuff like that, uh, it, the, the blade turns very nicely. While this guy right here, uh, this is your standard snitty, this is very hard to curve and turn. Um, it's not as it's not as easy to use. Uh, on top of that, a lot of paper always gets jammed up in here, so you constantly have to pull the blade out, put it back in to you know clean the paper out from the bottom, and then you can pop it back in and cut again. Uh, they, they both work very similar as far as styling goes, but this one just works a lot better. Don't want to lose it. It's very it's not cheap. You know, it's like an eighty or ninety dollar tool. This one's about twenty bucks, fifteen to twenty bucks. So. But again, these are cheap plastic. This is nice metal and this is Teflon coated as well. So this can slide between the release liner and the film itself and you can cut some of the release liner off if you want to without actually cutting the film. Very cool. The Snitty, you can't get on Amazon either. Uh, they do have cheaper versions. The cheaper version is even, more, is even worse. Uh, so don't even bother wasting your money on the cheaper versions of this. You can if you want to. Uh, but I really don't recommend it. Just go get one of these uh, real snitties or grab one of the fancy ones from SignMaker Tools. Blades. We're gonna need extra blades, guys, okay? So I have duplicates of some blades here. Uh, the reason being is that well, these blades go into the bodyguard knife. These are, I believe, titanium coated on the edge. They have a gold strip along the edge. These are from SignMaker Tools. These are fancy blades. These, are, these last a little bit longer and they actually last quite a bit longer. Um, and that's, that's mainly what it is, a little bit sharper. So they cut very, very well for quite a while. Don't have to replace them as much. Mainly it's not so much how, it's not for me spending a lot on this stuff because it doesn't cost that much you know, for blades, um, but it's the time that it takes. I'd rather just be able to cut forever and ever and ever one blade, that'd be amazing, but that'll never happen, I don't think. Uh, as far as the blades go for my knife, uh, these are, this is a titanium, I believe titanium coated blade as well. And the same ones are in here. Now these again are SignMaker Tools ones. These last a lot longer than the big box that I have in my hand. The big box that I have in my hand, uh, these are anti-cutter blades, 30 degrees. You can get a pack of 100 for like 20 bucks. Uh, they're okay, they, they do the job. They're not, they're not terrible blades. Uh, I go through them, I've, I've used them quite a bit. You know, I can see there's a lot less than 100 in there now. This pack was full, but they do the job. So the link to this one will be in the description below if you're just looking for blades. I recommend just buying the big pack of 100. It's like 15 or 20 bucks. It's, you can go to Home Depot and they'll honestly charge you like 10 or $12 for 10 of them. So think about that. Uh, and their blades are no, no better really. So, and I don't even believe Home Depot carries 30 degree blades. 30 degrees means the angle of this blade right here. How, how sharp that angle is. Uh, the other one's 45, the uh, standard blades, they're a little bit less angled. So this gives you a bit better precision when it comes to cutting around corners and edges and things like that, having the 30 degrees, 15 degrees difference. I've got another tool in here um, that was just introduced to me recently from SignMaker Tools. This is, if you're, if you're afraid of cutting your paint, this is the tool to have, okay? This tool is called, uh, I forgot again, Wrap Defender, and I'll show you it up close. It comes with an extra blade inside here. Uh, the blades, I'm, sh you're, I'm sure you'll probably have to get from SignMaker Tools themselves, but it comes with an extra blade. Let the camera focus. There we go. Right? And you can see that the end of it is completely covered. Can't hurt myself. Can't poke myself. The, the benefit to this is that 
when you're cutting between your door and your rear quarter panel or any between any gaps for the most part if you have rubber rubber weather stripping or if you poke in too far you might end up cutting the paint in the door jam when you're cutting down in between that area you also might cut any weather stripping or door seals uh, with your with your normal blade as you can see the difference here is that mine's unprotected on the top the one the wrap defender is completely protected for the most part there's there has to be an open spot but it works very well actually on top of that it has a little tiny tucking tool on the back side of it they call this the beaver tail uh, this is their new signature tool style style of tool i have one here as well again all these things fit in my pouch for the most part then like i don't keep the pack of blades on me um you know i don't obviously keep a roll of tape on me but and i don't keep extra buffers on me there's no need for that but that's what that's what you need so far. So uh, speaking about beaver tails, this is a beaver tail. Uh, this is another tool that was introduced to me halfway or near the end of the year last year. This is a handy little tool to have. This gets into your corners and around your edges and things like that really nicely. It's a little bit more durable as well than the wrap stick and cheaper. So if you're looking for something that's going to kind of get the job done for now until you want to maybe splurge on a wrap stick flex this this would be the tool to get uh, it does work very well I've used it many many times especially when I don't want to use my wrap stick uh, I'll try not to use my wrap stick too much because it could break um, so I'll use this instead when I'm doing things that I that I could use this for like the bottoms of the corners I can get in underneath um, just getting things tucked in really nicely around like in weather stripping and round corners and edges and stuff like that this helps a lot so this is only a few bucks compared to the rapstick flex the rapstick flex again best investments as far as tucking tools go i have a couple of other little tools here they're they serve a purpose you know they're handy they do get around the edges so you can see it has a little bit of hook here that will get around your door side you don't need them i find that i can do a lot of it with the rapstick flex this one has a less, less of a curve to it. Again, I don't find that I use this one nearly as much at all. This one's actually pretty decent. But what I do sometimes with these is, as you notice, the other side's flat. I use them as wedges to sometimes hold, maybe hold up some, some trim or some weather stripping and hold it up a little bit so then I can tuck the film in. Uh, so, that was, so that's what I would use that for sometimes. When it comes to buffers for your squeegee, so these guys right here, the yellow on my squeegee, that is called a buffer. Before I wrap a car, I'm going to replace the buffer on here. Uh, this is a different one that I have on here. It's a wet application one. It's more for like chrome or gloss finishes. Gloss finish, you're going to want to use a wet application, meaning you're going to want to use some kind of a lubricating uh, fluid on the buffer itself or on the surface of the film. This way it helps the squeegee glide, less friction, and uh, means less fine lines, less scratching, less swirl marks. A lot of fine lines will heat out in the sun anyways. Uh, I believe these guys work for dual purposes as well for wet or dry application. I've used them before. So before I get into actually, uh, again, wrapping this McLaren right here, I will replace my buffer. It's very important. Uh, as you can see, it's starting to get dirty and we don't want any, uh, we don't want it to be dirty. There are probably dozens of different types of buffers that you can get on the market. Choose whatever you feel like works for you. Uh, don't go with cheap, cheap, cheap ones. Cheap ones are pretty terrible. Uh, cheap ones look like, I'll show you. These guys right here. These are so thin. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but these are so thin that they actually don't really do much for protection. Uh, they leave a lot of scratches and they're just no good. Again, it's just something to try out. These guys right here are a lot wider and you can see the padding. That helps a lot, okay? So you don't wanna go with these cheap skinny little ones. They also, a good buffer will last a lot longer too. A Couple of other things you're gonna need here. Um, we're gonna need some masking tape. Masking tape's very important, guys. This is your protection tool, basically. This is gonna protect your, anything you leave on the car or anything that's in the way when you're wrapping. Uh, if, if I don't take the headlights out of here, which I probably won't, uh, I would wanna mask off the headlights to protect it. A, from maybe me slipping with my knife, uh, you know, that could happen. I don't wanna slip a little bit and then nick a headlight or nick something that I shouldn't be cutting. So this, I put, usually put a couple of layers down on top of other opposite areas that I'm not currently wrapping. If I'm wrapping the fender, I would, 
I would mask here. I would mask a bit on the bumper. I wouldn't mask the hood. I don't really need to because the gap is quite large between the hood and the fender. And anytime the gap is quite large, I never really mask. When the gaps are tight like this, I always mask. Again, it keeps it very safe and protected. It also allows the film to slide off of that opposite area a little bit easier. So if you wanted to leave a little bit of extra um, film to tuck in and behind, you could put your, put your tape down, make sure you put a couple of layers, cut on the tape, leave yourself a little bit extra, and then lift the film off of the tape and then tuck it in behind the light. That'll give you a little bit extra to be able to tuck in behind the light uh, without even removing the light. Very handy to have. I, 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 I mean, for what this costs, maybe anywhere from four to eight dollars a roll. You might use a whole roll of car. That's probably even unlikely. So you're probably using like anywhere from two to four dollars per car of tape. Maybe half a roll or so. Maybe not even. Uh, a, a roll could probably last you three or four cars. It really just depends on how much masking you're doing. Very inexpensive stuff, guys. You don't need a lot here. Another product you're going to want to use to keep your vehicle safe or whatever you're wrapping safe is cutting tape. Okay, Cutting tape is very important. This is used in place when you, when you have to cut on the surface of the vehicle. Let's say if you were to have to cut on the surface of the vehicle with your knife, you would put this down first. This has, this is straightforward, a lot of you probably know what it is. It has a filament in the middle of it. So we get over here. So that white string and then around the outside is the green carrier. This allows when you, this allows the, the tape to stick the green carrier, and then when you're ready, you take the, you take the filament from the in, inside, you snap it out of the green carrier, and you use it to cut the film that's on the car. Great for doing racing stripes, uh, doing inlays and stuff like that. Uh, I always use cutting tape when I do inlays. It's very important, because otherwise you're gonna end up cutting with your blade on the paint, and that's not good, you don't wanna do that. Uh, last but not least, guys, we have a heat gun. Available on Amazon. Cutting tape, available on Amazon. Buffers, a lot of them are available on Amazon. Blades, that sort of thing. Again, whatever SignMaker tool stuff uh, I have here, that is not available on Amazon. But the heat gun is, and a lot of the stuff that I, that I use is available on Amazon. Now, this heat gun here, um, run of the mill, $25, $30 dollar heat gun. Don't go out there and spend $100, $200 on a heat gun for what? Man, I, I take this heat gun and when I'm heating something, I, I sometimes throw it off to the side or I drop it from four or five feet. You can try not to do that, but I like to move quickly. And for me, if a heat gun lasts me, you know, three or four or five car wraps, that's great. You know, if it's 30 bucks, amazing. I don't want to have to spend 100 or 200 or 300 dollars on a heat gun every time or even just worry about it. Uh, these tools, they're, they're going to end up breaking probably anyways over time. You know, heat guns can only last for so long. Basically, the ceramic elements t tends to fall apart on the inside uh, or just things go wrong with it because they're very high heats. They don't last forever. Uh, even if you were to gently place it down all the time, if you use it a lot, it's not going to last forever. Get yourself one that you like. The uh, reason why I like this one, actually, I used to use one very similar to this until Vivid came out with this one. Uh, I used an $80 heat gun and there, it was really good. It had a strong fan, it had good, like, it would heat up very rapidly, so it would get to its peak temperature very rapidly. It only has two settings, and I always use my heat gun on the highest setting. Uh, so the last one and this one only have two settings. Uh, it fits well in your hands, and the fan is quite strong, so that's important to me that the fan is strong. It doesn't get too, too hot, like you're gonna like, um, Catch, catch something on fire, you could, I guess. It gets about 500 degrees, this thing. Uh, so it's hot enough, it's more than hot enough. You don't need a heat gun that's 1,000 degrees, you really don't. You're just gonna end up burning something that you shouldn't be burning. It's, gonna, it's more likely to cause problems when your heat gun is able to go too hot. The reason why I turn the heat gun up to the max is to get the most fan power. I want the fan to be blowing out as hard as it can. This way it can fan the area a wider area of heat that will help me to like stretch film around bumpers for the most part. That's, that's, where, that's why I like it. Uh, it also heats up more rapidly when you put it on the max. And I just, that's just my personal preference as far as settings go. Um, again, heat gun, basic guys, get yourself a 15, 25, $30 one. You don't need anything fancy. You can use this one, uh, you know, great products. I'd say these last me with how abusive I am with them. Anywhere from three to six months, 30 bucks. I, in three to six months, I've pumped out maybe like you know, six or seven or eight car wraps. All of the tools that you have combined here, I mean, a lot of, some of this stuff is fancy, but it's, a lot of this stuff you just buy one time, like the squeegees, you'll buy one time. You might spend 50 bucks on two of them, but I've, again, I've had them for two and a half years. This spring, this fall will be three years. Um, 
and I've had these two squeegees right here. This thing right here, I've had it for the same amount of time, almost three years, so I've had that for the same amount of time. Uh, I've broken only one of these in the almost the two and a half years that I've had these guys right here. So I've only broken one of these. This guy I had it forever, this blade breaker, it doesn't go anywhere. So you, so you, buy, you buy a kind of one time thing. What you need after that is, you know, the buffers are fairly inexpensive, blades and stuff like that are fairly inexpensive. You're not gonna blow through these things uh, that quickly even either. So, you know, one buffer per car, maybe it costs you a dollar per car, that's really low. You're gonna roll, use half a roll of tape, that's like anywhere from two to four dollars per car. Uh, your heat gun, maybe it breaks every four cars and it costs, this thing costs 30 bucks, or say it costs 40 bucks. So it's $10 per car that it's costing you. Glove, this glove lasts forever. Um, digital thermometer, unless you break it and drop it, it's gonna last forever, They're not, and it's not expensive. You don't have to go out there and drop hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, hundreds of dollars on buying everything. You don't need everything. This is basically all you need to be able to wrap and wrap at home. Uh, if you want extra stuff, totally up to you guys, but I've just shown you what I use. Now, I have a Sharpie here, you probably noticed it. Uh, I use a Sharpie when I'm trying to mark an area where I want to cut excess film out before I, before I start wrapping the panel. So let's say I want to cut out the wheel well area. So what I would do is I'd mark on, I'd, I'd push in with my finger to mark where the fender is, and then I'd just mark below with the Sharpie a line so I know exactly where to cut across with my bodyguard knife uh, or snitty. This, this is why I have a Sharpie for the most part. And when I teach, uh, I use it to draw things on the wraps to show people like directions and angles and what's happening. Uh, this, that's what helps me. But all this stuff right here, I'll show you, it's gonna fit all right back into my pouch. There's my beaver tail, there's my wrap stick. That goes with priority with the knife. Uh, there's the wrap defender that fits in there as well. Uh, what else do I need to throw back in here? Here's my bodyguard knife. I can even keep an extra pack of blades in there if I want to. Uh, squeegees, I keep my green one in the front because that's the one I use the most. I keep the gold one in the back. A triangle. My blade breaker box I usually keep on the inside of my pouch right here. This keeps it towards my body and away from the vehicle. Uh, glove goes in the top, larger section here. I actually don't even keep a lot in this middle pocket here. I have tons of space still in this thing. Um, I just keep my, my bodyguard in the middle pocket so exactly, I know exactly where it is. Every time when I reach for it, I'm like, oh, okay, there it is. Right here, I know I have, I'm either going to this pocket for my glove, my gold squeegee, or my triangle tucking tool. These little guys, I usually just keep in the bottom. Um, if I really need to get them, they'll be down there. I'll have to probably fish them out a little bit. And then again, if I want to keep some blades in there too, I can do that. So we've pretty much cleaned up the whole table. Again, that's extra. That's extra because I already got one of those in my pouch. Uh, blades I already got in my pouch too. These blades I don't need very much because that's for the bodyguard knife. Buffers I would have just replaced. Lifeless tape, I don't typically keep it on me. Uh, you can, but it could get dirty. So you can rest it on a clean area of the vehicle, like on the windshield or something like that, as long as you know, it's not in your way and keep it nearby. It's not a good idea to keep this on you because you'll crush it, you'll damage it, it's, it's fragile. So again, can't keep that on you. Heat gun usually stays somewhere on the floor near me and we've got everything out of the way and off the table right there, all in this little pouch right here. Again, I even have more space in this pocket right here to add something else. Guys, I wanted to do this video because the last video that I did do with uh, all the tools, it might've been a little bit overwhelming. This is more the basics and the essentials of what you need. I did forget another more, more important tool here, I should have known. Uh, we need magnets. Magnets, these are your extra hands. Now on a vehicle like this, Magnets don't work, okay? Nowhere. I don't believe anywhere on this thing is gonna be magnetic. So we're gonna leave that basically as we have to wrap with the magnets, without magnets for this one. Um, there is another fancy tool out there, it's called a gecko patch. It does a good job um, in being able to wrap a vehicle that's not magnetic, but I don't typically even use those. But magnets are your friends. Uh, they're gonna stick to anything. You can keep a couple on your pouch here. I've seen uh, I've seen uh, Siegfried do it, and he keeps them right there. That's pretty cool. You can keep a couple on you, no big deal. Uh, they're not so much in the way. I don't keep them there because I use too many. I, I keep like eight of these things at least. Uh, probably have a couple dozen actually hanging on the, sh on the cabinet, but that's about it. Guys, I hope this video was informative and helpful in explaining what you need to be able to wrap uh, at home or on your own, or not even just a car, but pretty much anything else. You don't, will not need more than this. 
but if you choose to get more stuff, totally up to you. Again, I'll point you with all the links in the description below so you can grab all this stuff. Thank you for watching. Looking forward to doing more videos for you. Take care and be safe.